On the 10th day of October, Halloween gave to me 10 prices burning, 9 seagulls pecking, 8 scientists sneaking, 7 gold when shooting, 6 psychic scamming, 5 naked witches, 4 alien spelunking, 3 UFO abductions, 2 deputy so-and-sos, and a masked hawk being creepy. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another edition of the 31 Days of Halloween. This one on October 10th. Now, uh, this is a very special day to me. Not, not only are we continuing our look at classic horror movies, and in particular one that I find uh, quite enjoyable, but also because this happens to be my birthday. And as such, I will kind of be out of the loop uh, here for the next week or so, because as you are listening to this, uh, I am uh, boarding a cruise ship to uh, to go to uh, the the Halloween cruise and go to the Bahamas and and that kind of thing. So um, I will not be around to discuss this movie in person with you uh, for the next few days. But uh, you know, it is my birthday, so that's cool, and I'm excited. Uh, I'm looking ahead into the future as I record this. But here's another thing that's great: not not just is it my birthday, although you know the bank should close and everybody should be off work. But uh, it is also the first morning that I've gotten up, taken the dog out and thought, oh my goodness, I need a coat. And oh, I did my heart so good. Uh, not just because uh, my heart regulates better in the cooler temperatures, but because it means that fall is really here, that the Halloween season has truly begun uh, because yes, we are, we are fully into jacket weather. And, you know, it's warming up a little bit today, but, oh my goodness, guys, I am so excited anytime you you feel that crispness to the air. I was trying to tell the boy this morning to put on some pants instead of shorts before he went to school, and of course he was like, what do you know, old man? And then he stepped outside and immediately went and got pants because I'm way smarter than him. He just doesn't recognize that yet. But <laughs> it's uh, a, a ton of uh, excitement is building because Halloween is right around the corner. As you're listening to this, there are three short weeks until Halloween, which is also very exciting. So all that stuff is great. And to uh, accompany all that great news, the the birthdays and the cruises and the cool weather and all of that stuff, um, we're, we're talking about one of my kind of new favorites uh, because this is a movie I came to fairly late. But uh, of course... I am talking about uh, Witchfinder General, a.k.a. The Conqueror Worm. Uh, and it is a, a terrific movie. And yeah, all right, so look, I just love Vincent Price. Vincent Price is terrific. Uh, he will be represented yet again on this list. We'll talk about that an another time. But uh, more importantly, um, he is... This is maybe one of my favorite roles from him. Uh, and and it begs the question, could anyone else besides Vincent Price perform this part? Which, of course, is the Witchfinder General of the title, uh, Matthew Hopkins. And uh, so here's the basic premise. The basic premise is this is during um, the, the Civil War in England between royalists and uh, the uh, like Oliver Cromwell's group. And so there was a lot of turbulence, a lot of inner turmoil within uh, the country. And so the army is off like fighting against Cromwell's men or, or, or I'm sorry, trying to find uh, the king because Cromwell has taken power. And so the king is, you know, all fleeing out of the country. And uh, in the midst of all this chaos comes Matthew Hopkins and uh, his, his pal, John Stern who are riding from town to town, ridding places of witches. And uh, they do so in, you know, the, in very stereotypical fashion, or, you know, one presumes his historically accurate fashion if uh, um, the, the witch trials here in America are any uh, indication. But yeah, so they, they roam around and basically just create this religious fervor in, in these little towns where, 
you know, somebody gets pissed off because somebody stole a goat and they say that they're a witch and they contact Matthew Hopkins. He rolls into town and performs a bunch of bogus tests to prove, in fact, that they are uh, witches. And, um, you know, it, they end up being murdered. And this kind of spreads like everybody just starts pointing fingers at one another. And after three or four people are dead, then they ride to the next town and do the same thing all over again. And um, set against this is, uh, you know, two uh, young lovers, uh, Richard and Sarah. And Richard is in the army and is uh, sent off to go, you know, hunt for the king who is trying to flee the country. And... Uh, meanwhile, Sarah is in a village where her, uh, her father is, or adopted father, I think, something like that, caretaker at least, is a local priest who is accused of witchcraft, and of course she is too, by association, like, hey, how can you live under the, the roof of a witch and not be a witch yourself? And so Sarah makes the rather unpleasant deal with Matthew Hopkins that she'll, you know, go to bed with him so that he will show some mercy, and so he does. And this gets at the heart of what makes Witchfinder General so great, which is, it's just about the essential hypocrisy of all of this. That Matthew Hopkins, even though he is wearing the, you know, the, the word of God as a shield, that he is out to root out Satan, is actually this very cruel, sadistic, uh, lecherous character. And... Later on, you know, Richard will discover that Sarah's uh, adopted father has been murdered uh, by Matthew Hopkins and John Stern, who, by the way, John Stern is the only person involved in this witchcraft nonsense that is honest about his motives. He just likes hurting people, and he is upfront about that. He likes to torture people and kind of suggests that Matthew Hopkins is the same. He just won't admit it. And Matthew Hopkins you know, shows himself to be both cowardly and manipulative in equal measure uh, at a certain point when he and, and Stern are beset by the, the soldiers and he kind of gives John Stern up who gets away and later confronts Matthew Hopkins. And he's like, Hey, I, you know, I told you that, uh, you know, I, I would, uh, that they were there, that you should run. And if you got caught, that's kind of your deal. Uh, but you got away. So great. And by the way, I saved your share of the money that we're making from, you know, murdering all these people. All that stuff is is really good. And Vincent Price is at his most, uh, like, sinister in this. He is, he is so cold and so self-confident. And, you know, it, it's sort of that idea of kind of buying into your own bullshit. That after a while, when you're saying, hey, I'm doing this because I have the... Uh, the, the power of the Lord at my back and that I'll, what I'm doing is truly God's work here on earth. And I think at a certain point he starts to believe that, or at least I think that's the way that Vincent Price plays it. Um, but he's also a very petty man, uh, whether it is using his power to get sexual favors from Sarah or it's to leave behind his one companion uh, to be captured and assumedly killed. And he has no remorse uh, for that when he gets to the next town without John Stern. And they're like, hey, where's your buddy? He's like, oh, he was delayed. Don't even worry about it. Uh, I'll take care of things. In fact, in fact, I've come up with a new way to, to kill witches, which I think is probably going to be better, which just involves building a giant cross and lowering, like uh, attaching the witch to said cross in a crucifixion style and then lowering the whole thing onto a fire so that they burn. Isn't that a great way to take care of witches? That will surely save the souls of the, the witch and, uh, and, and garner a confession. And, you know, that is one of the worst parts of this whole witchcraft accusation stuff. Is that basically you're being tortured to confess. And then once you confess, you can be killed. And uh, it's just... It's just the worst. It's just utter nonsense and it's brutal and sadistic and it's all the things that Matthew Hopkins is and it creates, you know, the thing that Witchfinder General does that's so fascinating, one, it's surprisingly violent for the time uh, in which it was made. I mean, this is a movie from 1968, which I guess in fairness is the same year that 
uh, Night of the Living Dead came out. Uh, worth saying, this was uh, directed by Michael Reeves, who did you know movies like The She Beast and and The Sorcerers. But I mean, Witchfinder General is kind of his masterpiece, and I'm not saying that it's a it's a perfect film. There's some messiness around the edges of this, but it is uh, one of those movies that certainly suggests how corrupt an institution is and how it can be used in a way to murder the people it's supposed to serve. And also what the, the, the ripple effect of that is like by the end of this movie, Richard as a character, as the guy who's trying to save his lady fair, as well as the lady fair, that they're both just crazy. You know, they've been driven mad with vengeance and pain and it, it, it's incredible. And, also, you know, going back to Vincent Price here, you know, is it the role he was born to play? Maybe, but it really calls upon him to use his dramatic chops as well as those kind of leering horror looks that he's great at giving. Um, and he's just, he, he's brilliant in this. Like Vincent Price is terrific. And, and the movie is surprisingly modern for being a movie that is, you know, 50 plus years old at this point. It's surprisingly modern in its ideology and its look at, like I said, you know, the idea of institutions becoming this tool of, of evil and, and torture and pain and what that can do to the average citizen. Um, and as well as just the paranoia of it all. And there's some historical fiction kind of business happening with uh, Cromwell's army and, and what's going on in England at the time that I find really interesting. It's just a terrific movie. It's really, really uh, dark. It's a, a a really mean spirited kind of movie. And you know, if if you want something that, in terms of just a good old fashioned Halloween movie, that is equal parts uh, terrific filmmaking and terrific acting and and great thematic work, but also being kind of kind of angry. Uh, that and, and something that really digs into just the dark side of human nature. Um, it's really something. And, you know, I pose the question is, like, does a good horror movie need to be historically accurate? Because you have to think that Robert Eggers saw Witchfinder General in in some of his research in doing The Vavitch. And, yeah, it, it, I mean, he's... It, it, like, the movie is... Uh, steeped in in uh, of of like a tumult of history that lends to the the sense of chaos and disorder that that permeates the movie. It's just terrific. What a great movie Witchfinder General is. Uh, if you've never seen it, you know knowing the basic beats of the plot, and I haven't totally given away the ending, which you need to see. Uh, but it it's if you've never seen it, it's just an amazing piece of like British horror and, and even though there is nothing supernatural in this movie, um, it's even worse than that. It is how horrific human beings can be to one another for their own financial and sort of, you know, self aggrandizing enjoyment. And, oh man, oh, which finder general is so good. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad that I watched this again as part of, uh, this classic series because uh, like I said, I came to it kind of late and every time I watch it, I get a little more out of it. it it's rapidly climbing the charts uh, as far as my uh, favorite British horror films of this era. Uh, it really stands uh, head and shoulders above a lot of the, the hammer output of the time it is not a hammer film. It was a American international is, is who did it and Tygon pictures. Um, but it's it you know it it is it ranks among the best of the Hammer films even though it's not a Hammer film, uh, and those are some of my favorites uh, of the time. It's not quite as Technicolor as the Hammer stuff. It, it's a little more subdued in its its color palette, uh, but I think that is to its favor. It grounds it. It feels very dirty and earthy, and um, it's just wonderful. Oh oh, Witchfinder General, so such a wonderful wonderful movie. All right. So uh, that'll do it this time around. Uh, like I said, if you've never seen it, uh, dial up Witchfinder General. You will not be disappointed. It's a terrific movie. I think it's on Tubi or one of those, maybe Plex, one of those free services. So you might have to put up with uh, some commercial breaks, but worth every second of a commercial break to, to get through this movie 
uh, particularly in its uncut fashion, because boy, the end of the movie gets gets dark, gets real grim, uh, and I think you'll enjoy it. So if you are listening to this, as I've said before, on the Legion podcast feed, uh, please hop over to the Dark Parade, where you can get more of this business, uh, along with other uh, podcast fun, uh, just about any old time, well, once weekly, except for this month, in which we are doing once a day, because uh, the 31 Days of Halloween is occurring simultaneous on that feed in the Legion podcast feed. If you're listening to this on the Dark uh, Parade feed, uh, first of all, thanks for being a member of the Dark Parade, but also uh, be sure you are subscribing to the Legion podcast feed, where you get not just the Dark Parade, but you get a number of shows. I've listed them on other episodes, uh, so I will not do so again here. But uh, trust me when I say there are fantastic shows on the Legion podcast feed that you need to be listening to. Um, so yeah, so please do that. Uh, as I said, I will be out of town this week. Uh, although I still encourage you to check out, uh, the discord server, which is where I primarily am when I'm, uh, you know, d ditching into or diving into social media. Uh, I will be, um, checking the, the Facebook feed about once a day to make sure that I'm not missing anything. So feel free to leave me a message there. Uh, for Legion Podcast, you can also subscribe to uh, the Instagram and Twitter and Facebook group for all of that stuff uh, as well. So until tomorrow, which will no longer be the national holiday that is my birthday, sadly, uh, it is time uh, to bid you a fond adieu. And uh, and as a brief, uh, just, uh, the very briefest of teases tomorrow, um, we're going to do, uh, what I like to think of as the Thelma and Louise of horror, and I will say no more about it, but tomorrow is going to be a banger. I think you're really going to enjoy it. So until October 11th, uh, you are, you are having a wonderful Monday, have a creepy Monday, and we are only three weeks away from Halloween. So, uh, enjoy yourselves out there and I will talk to you all tomorrow for another edition of the 31 days of Halloween. Talk to you then. Oh, <laughs>